My name is Benjamin Mee, director of Dartmoor Zoo, and you're watching me on myblitz.co.uk. When you wrote the book in the first place, did you ever see Matt Damon playing you in a story of your life? No, quite honestly not a flicker of that uh, ever crossed my mind that we would ever go any further. I wrote the book, it was incredibly hard, because I'd write it in a difficult time. Uh, I had three months and there was a lot at stake and I wrote it, put it to one side, spent all the money that it raised on the zoo and really forgot about it, but it just kept coming back in this book. People would carry it up the drive and you know get me to sign it and um, it, it didn't go away. And then one day I got a call from a lady with an American accent saying, you know, gee, I read your book, it made me laugh, it made me cry, I think it'd make a great film. And I'm thinking, yeah, 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 good, thank you. He said, and I'm from Fox. I was like, oh yes. You know. <laughs> What's the most fun thing about running the zoo? The most fun, oh, is, is just the way the animals surprise you all the time. I love it, because they, you know, they're not domestic animals, they're wild animals. And some of them you can go in with, like uh, the Kwati Mundi, which are the kind of climbing raccoons. And Saw those, fed those. Oh, you've done that? <laughs> yeah. Really, because the thing about those guys is they've got... They, they can bite your finger off. Um, oh, don't tell me that before I went in. Well, then I always <laughs> tell people that. But you, you treat them with, with respect and caution, and they're friendly. You know, they'll come up and take food from you. You start to stroke them. They're like, "What are you doing? You know, get off me!" And like just today, this morning, I was able to creep up on a capybara down there. And if you approach them in the right way, they're so stupid, but you know they're quite flighty. And if you get close enough to them. Finally, you actually touch them like that, and they go, oh, it's okay. And then you stroke them, and you think, it's just great, it's just hilarious, I love it. I don't know whether you can answer this. Do you have a favourite animal? A favourite animal? Well, um, it's a toss up between Vlad, who is the big, soppy, friendly tiger up at the top, because um, he's just so good natured. I mean, he's just a big, pretty cat who wants a stroke, and you can't quite understand why you can't stroke him. Um, and the tapirs, I love the tapirs, because they're they look so worried, you yeah. know, and they tiptoe around, and you know, they just have this baby, and it jumps around, and they go, oh dear, like this, and they just look worried all the time. And again, they're super, you know, you can go in with them, and they'll, they'll come over to you, and you can stroke them and scratch them. And it's the same with any tape here, if you, if you scratch it in the right place, it will roll onto its back. And I don't know why this is. It, it's interesting because it works on the baby. As soon as the baby was, was able to stand, when the mother touches it in a particular spot, it's going <laughs> And then you can do that to the mother. And it must be some kind of evolutionary adaptation to get for the mother to get the baby onto it, you know, to lie down or something. But it's a, it's a, a unique insight into taking this that, that as a zoo director I now have. Which animal has scared you the most? Other than the incident that you've had with the jaguar, what, what else? Uh, is... Well, that was uh, Tammy the tiger, who we were carrying her um, under anaesthetic from the house, the tiger house, down to picnic area where there's a van ready to take her to another zoo in France. So there was overcrowding tigers, and the vet had used the wrong anaesthetic, and she just stood up. So she was carrying eight of us carrying her on a blanket. Just roll onto the thing, stood up, and everybody scattered like that, and except me because I was right next to her head. I was carrying her head, <laughs> and I could see her eyes. And I know about cats' visual perception. We've done them. I could see she's blurry. I went there. She's just waiting for something to trigger her. I thought I'm not going to be that trigger. I'm just going to stand here <laughs> still. I'm still like in a tree. You know, like. <laughs> and she just went right around. And around. And she went, she staggered off and lay down on the dark gun, which is the only way we had to dart her. So we had to ease that out. You know, pump it full of uh, anaesthetic again. Do you have any animals that you don't have yet that you would like to have? Many, many, many. Uh, zebra's coming soon. Oh, wow. Then giraffes, if possible. That's a two year plan. Uh, then elephants, got to be elephants, um, which is a huge deal and the council told me explicitly cannot have elephants. Uh, are there any elephants in the UK at the moment? There are 35 oh, in okay. 15 different zoos and I want to visit all of them um, but in the meantime as well the primate side uh, we're, we're hoping to get little tamarins about that big little monkeys and then build up maybe to gibbons and then orangutans so plenty to do over the next 20 years. lots of reasons years. to come back exactly yeah. there will always be development changes 
If our readers wanted to get into working with animals, what, what advice could you give them? Uh, plenty of things to do to work with animals. Um, okay, well, over the age of 16, you can usually get work experience uh, volunteering at a, at a local zoo. Um, uh, which is a great way to see if you like it because everyone thinks, oh, it'll be great, but it's quite hard work. Um, it's, it's physically and mentally demanding. Um, but that's a very good way to go to, to, to start, is to come and actually experience it. So, yeah, that would be my advice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 